when we were working, because I'm also helping the DepEd sa K-12 sa paggawa ng bagong curriculum sa Araling Panlipunan. And napigla sa akin yung mga kataas-taasan doon dahil uh, binanggit ko na sa grade 1 sa bagong curriculum, isang batayang konsepto na aaralin ng bata ay yung konsepto ng pagpapatuloy at pagbabago. Continuity and change. They looked at me. Huh? Grade 1? Yes! Grade 1, gagawa na ng timeline. Grade 1? I said, yes. So we explained. I explained. You ask a child who is grade 1, grade 1 is what? 7 years old? 8? Ano yung nilalaro mo nung ikaw isang goal? 2 months old? 3 months old? Ano? Rattle? Huh? Uh, yung mga gumagalaw na objects, ganun lang. Yung object ang gumagalaw, ikaw hindi masyado. At anong nilalaro mo ngayon? Ay, basketball, uh, games, I don't know. So, are they the same? No. What spells the difference? Siyempre, nung baby, hindi ka pa nakakalakad. Hindi ka pa tumatakbo. Nakahiga ka lang, baby. Eh, ngayon, ah. It's instinctive. What historians and history teachers have to do is to tap that native instinct. People have a sense of what, of, of, of change. And you know, the concept of continuity and change, which is fundamental to history, is fundamental to all social sciences and even the natural sciences. When you look at, when you do scientific experiments, what you're actually trying to do is to trace how elements change through processes. Ganun din. Except ours, we're not dealing with natural elements. We are dealing with social and human, human events. So to go back to my point, what we have really here is an irony. On the one hand, some people telling us it's unnatural to think historically because of the problem of context. And then on the other side, but there are instincts that help us think historically in a natural way. For example, to tell a story, all children tell stories. Pag uwi ng bata, anak, ano nangyari? Ay, nanay, ah, nag-away na naman sa school. Oh, sino ang nag-away? Hmm? Bakit nag-away? You know, in history, causality, cause and effect, is a fundamental aspect. Uh, concept. All children ask bucket. They can be so makulit with bucket. But why? But why? But why? After a while, you want to tell them, tama na yung why, why mo na yan. Ha? Nakakapagod na yan. But it's natural. Everybody asks why. So there is also that instinctive understanding I think we have. That, and, and, but there is no consciousness that these are fundamental history concepts. I think what has happened is that the educational learning, the learning system has failed all these centuries to tap into how children might naturally think so that history no longer becomes unnatural but maybe more natural. I mean, at some point, children will ask the parents, where did I come from? And not all parents know how to answer that question. Right? Okay, so that's, that's the first point that I want to make. That there, there is a kind, there's a part of history that maybe, okay, it's unnatural to think historically, but then there is also a part of history that says, yes, there are basic things we do in our everyday lives that are really applications of basic concepts in history. So let me go to my, my other point, which is so, if, if history is not all that unnatural pala. How come we don't like it? How come we don't see it as an instructive tool for learning? We see it as a requirement. Yes, you cannot finish high school without history. And I don't think you can get a college degree without history either. But I'm talking about instructive in terms of learning. So I want to go to the second point, which is it's really very, very badly taught. It is, and I will not hide that 
reality in general. Okay, you might find a few exceptions, but on the whole, what, what is my basis for saying so? First, mga two years ago, uh, I led a team of colleagues sa uh, history department ng UP at nireview namin ang mga textbook sa basic education. Mula sa grade 1 uh, hanggang grade 6 sa public school. No? Tapos mulang first year hanggang third year. Hindi namin tiningnan yung fourth year kasi economics, hindi naman kami economist. So tiningnan lang namin yung grades 1 to 6 and then first to third year. And okay, of course may mga factual inaccuracies. I don't agree, I don't like it, but you know, for me, if it's a factual inaccuracy, that's the easiest to, to correct. Di wastoin mo lang yung mali. But there were more fundamental inaccuracies or errors, if you, mean, you want me to put it that way. One was bias. Grabe talaga yung bias at hindi siya uh, stated. Medyo disimulado. When they talk, for example, kasi kung titignan natin yung old curriculum, sa mula sa grades 1 to 6, it's all civica. That's why it's so boring. It's a waste. I, I think no, no wonder, you know, we, the basic ed produces graduates who don't even know how to, to decide maybe the, the good candidate to put in office. That's it. Number one, so grades one to six, you only take Philippine history once. Grade five. So public school ito, ha? But grades one, two, and three, civica. Grade four, geography. Grade five, history. Grade six, por Dios, balik ka na naman sa civica. Okay. Tingnan mo yung curriculum ng grades one to three. Um, simple lang, grade one. Tingnan mo ang... Larawan sa textbook. Mahilig sila sa Aita, may isang Agta at Igorot Ata. Yun ang favorite nila. Tingnan uh, ang kanilang itsura. Iba ang itsura. Pati ugali nila, iba. Iba kanino. When you say they are different, you normally ask different from whom. And when you try to answer the question different from whom, what you're actually saying is if they're different from me, then you are privileging me because I am the standard. And the ideal, presumably, is that they should be the same as me. God forbid. It would be a terribly boring world if you had a million me's. So, but it's implicit. Eh? It is not, it, it, it's subliminal. And that appears again in grades 2 and 3. Dadalawin ka ng isang agta at igorot at mananatili sa bahay mo ng ilang linggo. Okay? Ano yung iyong reaksyon? E pag grade 1, di pa masyadong marunong sumulat. So may smiley, nakaganon, or may smiley, nakaganon. Of course, you're supposed to check the smiley. But the way they proceed the explanation, pati it... Pati ugali nila iba. Now, in Filipino, when you say iba ang ugali, that is usually pejorative. And that is contained in the, in the book. Yung isa pa, ano yung mga uh, papel at tungkulin na ginagampanan ng mga miyembro ng pamilya? O oh, the best ko is si nanay. Uh, of course, I'm paraphrasing. Nanay is a caregiver, kusinera. Labandera, Tagalinis, uh, name it. Nanay does everything. Okay? The weirdest part is that the majority of our public school teachers are women who work and are professional. Not once does that say anything about the mother who also works. A mother who is also capable of contributing to society outside of the immediate family. But what does that teach the child? Ah, so when I become nanay, then that's my job. Ako maghugas, magluto, maglaba, mag... You know, and yet, if you look uh, on paper, the rules are you should not have bias against ethnicity, against gender, against blah, blah, blah. 